night. For some of us, there is a draw, a magnetic pull, the light and the darkness in harmony. For some time now, I've been known as a nocturnal painter. Who doesn't love the draw of the late night 7-Eleven? Or the red lights reflecting off the wet streets of a speeding car passing by? For some, it would be easy to overlook the vacant pillbox gas station. Maybe you would prefer the orange glow of a street light tangled up in telephone wire. The abandoned ambulance in a deserted industrial park? I know I do. You can find this and so much more in a place located off a street with the macabre name of Witch Duck Road. The name is a reminder of the times when the locals persecuted and sentenced people accused of witchcraft to death by drowning. As cheerful as that sounds, Witch Duck Road is devoid of the 1700s colonial charm. Instead, we are surrounded by industrial parks and construction. Which brings us to our painting subject tonight, excavators. Witch Duck Road is littered with excavators. So let's begin with tonight's urban plein air demo, shall we? Hey guys found a nice little lit excavator over here and so I'm gonna go ahead and do a painting and one of the things I want to share with you is how to use your smartphone as a way to compose your shot uh, I like to do this especially sometimes if you don't have the time to finish a painting or even do a painting out on location you can use your phone to like kind of get a composition if you will sketches are great too but I like this because it's a real handy tip to uh, so I'm just going to go into my smartphone and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the full on shot and you might want to make sure that you wipe your lens on your smartphone because if you don't what will happen is you could get you know smudgy fingers which causes lens flare you don't want lens flare so here we go I'm going to just take a wide angle shot here and then I'm going to zoom in little bit. Now I like the reflection on this crane here. It looks really nice uh, in the muddy water. I might include that. So I'm going to take another shot here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. And if your smartphone has the ability to do a grid, I like to have the grid. That way I keep the photo kind of horizontal. Of course you can always change that after the fact. But I'm going to try and wait for this light to turn red. I almost wish the lights would show up in the uh, reflection. Let's see what happens here. Turn red. There we go. So we'll get a yellow. And there we go. Now we got red. I got double red. So now I've got the lights that I want. And there we go. I think I, I like that one. I'm going to go in just a little bit closer just to see composition wise a little bit. There we go. And sometimes you can crop your subject a little bit as well just to see how that works. So. so that's how you use your phone to kind of like get your composition ready to see if it's going to work visually or not versus trying to sort it out on the canvas. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set up. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and set up right here, stay on the sidewalk, and uh, hopefully uh, the police won't bother us tonight. No. See, and there we go. We got some street life already. No. So. There we go. Yeah. Where are y'all going? Yeah, so looks like there's a party. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set up. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna try something new today. I've got my uh, little selfie stick and tripod. I'm gonna try to arrange it so that we can capture a nice little time lapse uh, while I paint this. Hopefully it'll work out okay. Uh, and if not, oh well, it's only video. So if you want to know more about my gear, I had a video of Krispy Kreme that I talked extensively about it and has links and I'll provide some of the links in this video as well at the end. Once again, 
again my favorite tripod to use the Joshua Bean Day Tripper. All right, so here's a quick tip for this session that I want to share with you. One of the things that I like to do when I'm painting is I like to have my paints laid out so I can quickly access them, but there's something more to it than just that. And let's look down here. As you can see here, I have my paints from white to black and then everything in between. But they're also, if we look up here on my palette, they're also in the same order. That way, when I need to go get some paint, I know exactly where to grab. So having them laid out in the same manner that you have them on the palette as you do here. And I like to have a little bag underneath so I can then move it. That'll make it easier then to go ahead and uh, grab what you need and you know exactly where it is, especially when you're in a speed paint session or a quick draw or just need to paint quickly before you leave uh, or have to leave, I should say. So yeah, so that's my quick tip for the day. So one thing that I like to do is, is try to compose my shot. I used my camera earlier, uh, but sometimes you have to readjust. So just a little bit of Gamsol on your napkin. Uh, Viva <laughs> paper towels, shout out. <laughs> and sometimes you have to readjust where things are so that it fits properly the way you want it to. I might have to go a little bit smaller.
Ah, there is something romantic about painting at night. The atmosphere, the mystery, the sense of solitude. One thing I don't miss is attempting to mix colors under an orange glow. If you have ever struggled to paint under such lighting, I would highly recommend trying the street lights of new. The updated LED street lighting makes it remarkably easy to mix colors and paint. And let's face it, it's easy to find things if they've dropped off your easel, like a paint cap or car keys. As much as I'd like to paint under LED lighting, however, it can tend to make your subject matter a little sterile and cold. Nothing's ever perfect, but I'll take what I can get with the current environment. In this case, great light, no bugs, no ticks, and so far, no police. Nothing can end a session more than security or a police officer who swears that you are up to no good painting, or that you must be violating some sort of safety code. But for the most part, we escape detection of the higher powers. Well, almost. At the end of the upcoming time lapse, you'll see we do get a visitor, and he does politely ask us to leave. Good thing that we've finished. There's one thing I must strongly suggest. Do not piss off authority while attempting to finish a painting. If you're cordial, polite, and patient, you might be able to convince them to let you finish. Works most of the time for me. In this case, I even slipped him a business card. I've painted long enough to know that one can never assume who will or will not buy one of your paintings. Even a lonely and bored security guard is a potential collector. Well, our session here is drawing to a close. One thing can be sure, I will be back to paint more hulking structures of metal. Those bulldozers and excavators lurking in this ever-changing industrial park on Witch Duck Road, they are already calling me to paint them again. Until next time. Hey guys, how's it going? So we're done for tonight. I think we had a good success with our time-lapse camera, so I'm really excited for you guys to see the full time-lapse as well as some other shots. And I just want to thank my son, Cole, for being awesome on the last video and this video. So I'm really excited for you guys to see this one. Please let me know uh, what you think of this and what you'd like to see more of. Once again, you can follow me on my website, liquidmethod.com. Follow me on Instagram, as well as subscribe to this channel. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.